Hi, and welcome. I'm Siobhan Sarna here today with Stephen Wright, who is by original training an engineer. He helped so many people in the beginning of internet health uh, in early days, a true OG of helping people with their gut health. He and his partner, Jordan Reisner, were um, pioneers in getting the specific carbohydrate diet out there. Um, the SCD Lifestyles website is one some of you, if you've been doing this for a long time, may have actually uh, gone to and learned from. Fast forward to today, Stephen is helping people with continuing to learn about leaky gut and the research and all of their everybody's gut issues. He couldn't find in the marketplace what he wanted. And Stephen and I have talked about this for years. He didn't want to do any supplements, create any supplements. He was going literally around the world trying to find different ingredients and things that he was cobbling together for himself. He just was like, finally, I'm just going to freaking do it. And he created Healthy Gut. So we're going to be learning to, from him today about constipation, his own struggle, and the results and how you can help yourself with this. Uh, we do have a coupon from Stephen, as well as a special bundle with an exclusive discount that's like sweeter than anybody's getting, because you're here, you get it. And with that being said, I want to welcome in Stephen Wright. Hi, Stephen. Hey, Siobhan. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, we love having you here and teaching us. So constipation is a pain in the butt. There you go. I know you have struggled with a lot of different things, but when it comes to constipation, it's so frustrating. And we tend to hear those TV commercials going like, take Metamucil, fill in the blank fiber, whatever it is, uh, drink more water. And it it just, for so many people, that's simply not going to work and it's going to backfire, the fiber part at least. But what are your original thoughts that you want to share with everyone today about constipation and what we can do about it? <laughs> well, yeah, I find, I find constipation to be um, significantly more challenging to figure out than diarrhea. So if you happen to be uh, a constipation dominant body or in a phase of your healing where you're constipation dominant, I, I understand I've been there, at least my version of it. And, um, to me, it's typically, like I said, harder to figure out than diarrhea and affecting more people as well. Not that diarrhea doesn't suck in its own right, but it does. Um, and so with constipation being the more challenging, uh, body type, if you will, for gut health, um, I actually kind of think of, and I guess maybe this is too simplistic, but I like these simplistic, um, heuristics or whatever, just to help me try to give people like an understanding. Like if you haven't studied functional and integrative medicine, if you haven't been reading the research for the last 15 years, um, if you haven't spent hundreds of thousands of dollars trying all the stuff the experts tell you to do, like myself, um, it's hard to really give people context for what you've been through when you come up with these basic profiles. But um, I often think, and I know that some people might have objection with this, so just hear me out. It's just for just for purposes of illustration. Diarrhea is almost like a man's hormones, and constipation is more like female hormones. Mm -hmm. Female hormones are extremely complex compared to men's hormone profiles, and fixing the two different profiles typically takes a lot more effort to... Um, find the nuances for every woman's hormone, what stage of life is she in? What stage of the cycle is she in? Like there's so many um, levels of complexity to it. That is similar to constipation and diarrhea. With constipation, there can be lifestyle causes, like despite eating a really amazing diet or whatever you think is an amazing diet, despite using a lot of supplements, maybe even some of our supplements, it still, it still could be a lifestyle thing that's holding you back. Um, and I think that's super frustrating because you have to look in all these pockets of your life to really get constipation um, gone, if you will, or having like, I think most people who are constipated would love to have one awesome poop a day. Just like, like yeah. give me one great uh, fist bump poop a day and that will be amazing. <laughs> I can go on with my life. I don't feel extra full. I don't, I don't worry about my clothes fitting. Like that's, that's what they want. And so in an effort to get there, I think it's a good idea to kind of pick an area of your life and go through the sequence of trying to optimize it for not constipation, if you will check for the root issues and don't get too frustrated. If you've gone through certain areas and didn't find the answer because I guarantee if you're playing chess and not checkers, which is what I would encourage everybody to take away from this conversation today with constipation or any gut issue, 
please try to play chess and not checkers. And what do I mean by that? With checkers, you're just trying to get across the board and take pieces. Every move, you have an outcome. It's either a loss or a win. In chess, you're always trying to improve the odds of you winning. And sometimes you have to take a loss. You have to lose a piece or you have to go backwards on the board to win in chess. And the same is true in uh, constipation and in gut healing in general, but definitely constipation. You got to be thinking chess, not checkers. Because if the answer was poop now right away, like there's things like polyethylene glycol hidden in all kinds of anti constipation or constipation remedies. And that stuff is toxic to the gut lining. There's papers on this that polyethylene glycol is toxic. And so there are certain um, ways to go poop right now that will end up harming your overall healing path in the long run. And so if you can focus on chess and not checkers during the constipation journey, I think that's a huge, um, important step. I like that. That's a great set of analogies right there for sure. It's not just about drinking more water and doing no. fiber is the point. What are some underlying causes of constipation that we can throw out there as possible things to investigate? So there would be methane SIBO would be one of them, one of them, emo, intestinal methanogen overgrowth. There can be um, tortuous colon where you have extra length in your intestines. Um, what else, Stephen? Well, the list is like infinite. So there's no yeah. way to provide it hormones uh, anywhere. So like it the means- amount of odd birth defects you could have, or yeah. uh, let's say you got in a car wreck or you got hit in uh, a sport or something in your abdomen, Um, There are literal physical issues that could be at play that will keep you constipated. You could have severed nerves or something. And like, other than getting a CT scan and an MRI or something, you're not going to know that that's an issue. So if you were trying, if this has been a lifelong, so here's another simple thing that I like to think about. I think it's really helpful for healing. Are you a lifelong person or are you a trigger event? So I'm a lifelong person. I've had issues since birth and they got worse and now they're getting better and and I'm much better than I was from the peak. But from birth, I've had issues. Not everybody's like that. Other people are trigger event people who were doing just fine until, until the divorce, until Mexico, until college, until menopause, until something. Are Siobhan, are you lifelong or a trigger? Um, I'm five years old, five years old, okay. food poisoning at five. Okay, so most yeah. most of your life, but still a trigger event. Yeah. So if you're if you're from birther, if you're a lifelonger, your odds of it being a physical deformity are much higher than a trigger event because trigger event people do have a a phase of time in which they are considered healthy and normal right. um, in that regard. And so if you're somebody who's had lifelong issues, doing an MRI or a CT scan could be really really helpful. Um, in general, it's a motility issue. And so, like you said, anything that causes a motility change could cause the constipation. Methane SIBO is a huge one. Um, Low stomach acid is a huge one. Stress and nervous system dysregulation is a huge component. Uh, There are circadian components. There are um, motility components inside the small intestine around enzymes and then and then into your gut microbiome, you could have other infections, parasites, worms, um, things like that. Uh, so the, the list is really long. You can have really low hormones. Um, and that can also drive low estrogen can drive project, uh, constipation pretty bad as well. So the, the list is very long. And, and that's why, um, the idea of thinking of chess and like adopting a number of things, uh, is a good idea taking really good detailed notes is another good idea because the thing about constipation is it's not like you just figure it out tomorrow. Right. Right. You go from like, I haven't pooped in a month to I've pooped twice in a month. I've pooped once a week. I've pooped every other day. Um, it's really hard and it's bloody or hurtful to it's easy. And, um, uh, every few days, like those are, that's progress. And in constipation, that's really important to figure out progress. And so like, I'm not a huge fan of the water and, and I'm not saying that water and electrolytes don't matter. They do matter for constipation, but it's so said at this point that I assume most people have experimented with more water electrolyte consumption. Um, the things that I would say lifestyle wise that are typically, uh, factors of 
constipation that people are unwilling to either address or even know about. One of them is exercise. We've become allergic to exercise apparently in the uh, in the alternative medicine community. People who have uh, some sort of chronic fatigue syndrome. It could be uh, it could be that plus some other inflammatory. But there's this allergicness to exercise or something. And you don't escape, no matter what you have going on, um, the only condition I'm aware of that can have like a, that they have to go really, really slow is, is MCAS. So um, uh, MCAS for the histamine folks, the mast cell folks, they can have a bigger histamine flare from exercise. So you literally have to go, you know, a quarter of a block at a time or whatever and build slowly. But this, this meat suit that we're all in is built to move and it needs to be expressed. And that's part of vagal tone and it's part of nervous system regulation. And so if you're someone who's like, mm, yeah, I got some stress, I got some hypervigilance and you have done some gratitude work, you maybe you've done some therapy, maybe you've done some meditation tracks, but you're not moving the body that you inhabit, you're going to struggle getting that regulation because there's a, just a certain amount of kinetic movement that these bodies do best with. And it's much more than zero. And so I don't care if that's just 10,000 steps a day. That's what I say. Like if you're going from the couch, go from the couch to 5,000 steps, but then try to get to 10,000 steps by, you know, three months from now. And these things will help you with your motility, they will help your nervous system. They will help all of that. And if you could do that while you're outside and not covering your eyes with glasses, sunglasses, contacts, anything like that, you're going to help set your circadian rhythm, which if you do some research into that, there's plenty of people who have circadian mismatches, which causes bowel uh, motility issues. And so these are the some of the things that I feel like they're unfortunate in a way, right? It's inconvenient for me to tell you, go outside <laughs> and go outside without anything on your eyes. It's inconvenient for me to say, you're not moving enough. I know because I tell myself this and I'm like, ah, you know, it's raining out or it's cold yeah. outside. <laughs> it's true. It's very, very true. But this is once you do it and you realize the difference, it's highly motivating, but there is that discomfort of that period of transition of where you, you know, you're making that lifestyle change and it's uncomfortable. But once you get in the flow and you're like, oh, this helped, it's, it's highly motivating and it's irritating because like, why do you have to do it? Like, right. Why do you have to pay attention to that when other people appear not to? We all have our own stuff. We all have our own stuff. So what is, what, when people are thinking about um, getting things going, a lot of times magnesium comes up, Stephen. So can yeah. we talk a little bit about magnesium for a second? Yeah. Yeah. So again, let's think about chestnut checkers. We do want you poop in every day if possible, or every other day. I'd love it to be a, bis a Bristol number four, but a number three or number five is just fine as well. Um, the goal is to get there, right? Three, four, five, every day, every other day. If you're over that that um, cadence, if you will, and then we want to bring in something to get you on track because every day or every other day that goes by, you can recirculate your hormones that are spent hormones that are not good hormones anymore. You can recirculate any toxins. Let you know. Let's say that uh, one of the causes of your constipation is your your environment, the house you're in, or the whatever you're. Maybe there's some mold or some mycotoxins. In order to get that stuff out, most of the time you're pooping it out. And so being constipated during a binder complex or even a killing complex for SIBO, in my opinion, is a significant risk factor to recirculating toxins back into your body. And so magnesium is often chosen as one of the best and first um, ways to get your bowels moving because you're playing chestnut checkers. Let's say you don't need the magnesium to go to the bathroom. Well, you're just making your brain age better. You're making the rest of your nerves better. You're relaxing your nervous system. Magnesium is needed all over the body. And so if you can use products um, like magnesium that pull a little water into our bowels, that's basically what it does. That's how it creates um, the laxative-like effect. And the reasons why magnesium oxide 
are much more explosive and much more laxative than say magnesium glycinate is because the form of magnesium, the oxide form pulls in a significant more amount of water than a magnesium glycinate. And so if you're someone who's completely bound up, you're using enemas, uh, mag oxide could be helpful for you. But if you're not on enemas and you're not like super bound up, using a milder form of magnesium like magnesium glycinate is my preferred form because you're also getting glycine for your GI tract and for your nervous system. So we have a, a constipation bundle that's at 10% off, and then you can get $15 off additionally with free shipping in the continental US, which Clarissa, if you could pop that link into the chat so everyone can take a look at it, what is in the constipation bundle and what makes your magnesium so special, Stephen? Yeah, so the constipation bundle is my version of uh, chess before checkers. And so my goal with motility related uh, gut issues, which is basically constipation and diarrhea, they're both motility related, is we want to start at the top and work our way down. Meaning um, fiber and um, certain laxatives, certain herbal laxatives, they're more forcing like a golf ball through a garden hose. I want to unkink the garden hose and make it flow naturally. I want the golf ball to come out naturally. I don't want to force it through. And so in my opinion, the best way to to work on your motility is to start right at the stomach and use gentle, um, mild laxatives like magnesium glycinate to help in the meantime. So the magnesium glycinate in the constipation bundle that you can get, you know, $15 off uh, and free shipping in the U in the continental US plus another 10% off uh, is the 50% stronger than anything else in the market. And it's the purest. There's no flows, there's no fillers, there's nothing in there other than magnesium glycinate. And so typically people are a little underdosing magnesium glycinate for constipation. And most people need to be around 500 milligrams to, to 650, somewhere in there. That's when they start to see it. Um, and so if you get a mild agent like that, plus you stimulate low stomach acid and you get your stomach working properly, you get your stomach forcing the motility waves like it's supposed to do, then everything can kind of begin to work. It's, but it's it's almost like starting up like an old, um, maybe like an old lawnmower or something from yeah. the movies. Like you got to yeah. give it a few cranks to get it, everything right. going. Um, do you take it with or without food for the magnesium? I mean, you can take it either. I, I take mine before bed because it's helpful for sleep. So you could take, you know, two capsules before before bed. That's what I do. I take two to three before bed. Okay. How high a dose of mag oxide would you go up to without endangering oneself? Is there a rule of thumb for high one? You can go up to according to how many pounds there are. Um, magnesium oxide is extremely safe because the side effect is explosive diarrhea. So um, if you want explosive diarrhea, you can keep slowly edging your way up there. And at some point you'll be stuck on the bathroom for four hours. It's just like a vitamin C flush. Um, the same like effect glycinate, glycinate better. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the thing with mag oxide is that if you're off by like hundred milligrams, you can have explosive diarrhea for like three hours. And with magnesium citrate, you have slightly bigger tolerance windows. So you could be off by like hundred to 200 milligrams, but if you're off by 250 milligrams of mag citrate, you could be having explosive diarrhea for several hours as well. Mag glycinate doesn't typically cause that unless you're off by like 300, 500 milligrams. Like you have to go off by a big amount. Okay. So everybody's not everybody. Several people are asking about food. You do, you can do it with food. You don't have to, don't overthink that. Um, talk to us about magnesium and MCAS, which is mast cell activation syndrome, which is related to histamines. For those of you who are not familiar with it, way oversimplified that, but is it safe for MCAS folks? Yeah, if they can tolerate it, there's nothing that magnesium, right. um, but but everybody with MCAS is in a different position in their journey. So if they're reactive to everything, including natural minerals like magnesium or salt or vitamin D or vitamin A, curcumin, if these things cause reactions, and then it's a nervous system issue first. And mm -hmm. so you need to focus mostly on your nervous system and your hormones, and then come back to supplements and foods later if that's where you are in the MCAS journey. Okay. Um, let's see. We answered that one. So if, if mag, so with mag glycinate, you can go up to like 
you can easily go up to a thousand milligrams or more. You can do that with all the magnesiums. But like I said, you will at some point suffer explosive diarrhea with the other ones that you typically don't get with mag glycinate. And so because the bound ingredient is glycine and glycine is so helpful for the nervous system, for sleep, all those things, that's why I like it uh, better. And it's, it's the most, it's, it's the one built for sensitive guts in, in studies that has the least amount of reactions and upset tummies, things like that. Um, we were just able to pack more into each capsule and find a way to make it without, without flows and uh, additives, which I know a lot of people are sensitive to. So, so here, here are the ingredients. There it is. Somebody was asking, Shana was saying she went to the website and saw different bottles and bundles, but couldn't find the ingredients. So I just went to the shop and found found the ingredients for you right there. It's very straightforward. So this product alone is not going to fix uh, constipation. And especially if someone is uh, enema dependent constipation, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to need a host of products, including exercise, including you know nervous system regulation, things like that. So just know that. Um, for those people who are really constipated, I like pairing 1000 milligrams of vitamin C three times a day with the magnesium glycinate, you know, probably four to six capsules of our product per day. So just take it throughout the day. You're, you're basically, let's say that, um, it doesn't work. Well, more vitamin C is only going to make you stronger and better. And again, we're playing chess, not checkers. And so if those two together aren't getting there, um, then you can go you know, work on more herbal laxatives, things like that. But oftentimes I find with just the magnesium, the HCL guard and the holozyme, if we just start correcting things from the top down, a lot of times, not every time, but, and definitely not all the time. So if it's you don't feel like, oh, I'm broken or I'm some hard case, this right. is just the most generic, most applicable bundle that we could put together for constipation because other people will, you know, they'll have other causes of their constipation. Like if you have SIBO methane dependent, you might actually have to go kill that. And so, right. but you can kill that while on this protocol. So you can do them together. They work together. Absolutely. I want to just show you. So it's magnesium that we just showed you the ingredients of. It's the holozyme, which we've done multiple conversations about for digestive enzymes with Stephen. And we're going to touch on that in case you weren't there. It's fine. And then here's the HCL guard. Um, let's do en enzymes right now, Stephen, and then we'll talk HCL guard. Um, but remember, you are getting the 10% off on this bundle. No one else has this bundle. And then use code coupon code SIBO SOS for $15 off additionally, and then free shipping in the U S do you ship internationally, Steve? Ben? We do. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we have to charge for it because it's so expensive yeah. to move stuff. Yeah. Um, so, so hold those arms. We are going to break your food down properly because part of constipation is dysbiosis and it is these overgrowths. And so we want to take the food away from the bugs and give it to you. So, uh, Holozymes is going to change the structure of the food you're eating, allow you to hopefully increase the types of foods because this is not um, always the case, but I find it's very common that constipated people have um, cut out many different types of foods in their diets because they cause issues for them and they're aware of that, but that backfires at some level. So if you know that you know, vegetables don't taste like maybe to you, vegetables don't taste good or they cause you to be constipated. You might cut them out. Well, that fermentable fiber is very helpful for not being constipated. And one of the ways you can change your relationship to your food is to supplement with a high quality enzyme product. And so since enzymes decline as we age, since enzymes decline with stress and chronic conditions, supplementing with them to extract the nutrients into your body, leave less for the bugs um, is number one, good thing. Number two, good thing, or I guess that's three, but number two, good thing is that um, we're going to hopefully allow you to expand your diet. So for instance, if someone was said, uh, you have to solve constipation for this individual and all you can do is change their diet, I would do a number of things, but oftentimes people, uh, again, cannot tolerate or are too inconvenienced to keep them up. So number one is prunes. Prunes are shown in placebo controlled trials to improve constipation. It's not just your grandmother's myth. It, it actually works. Um, right. So are kiwi fruits. Two kiwis a day was very helpful in a, in a study with constipated folks. Um, but there are 
uh, polyphenols. There are different fermentable fibers and FODMAPs uh, in some of these fruits and vegetables that give people a lot of um, bloating, gas, and, and sometimes worse constipation or diarrhea. We can change the structure of those uh, fruits and vegetables using enzymes that you may have lost along the way. And so that would be my hope is that if you're someone who's cut out starches, you've cut out fruits, you cut out vegetables during your health journey, is that when you get on the bundle, you actually start expanding that food um, profile or or whatever you want to call it, that dietary restriction for yourself, because there's nothing inherently wrong with fruits, vegetables, and starches. Humans have been eating them for as long as we have recorded history, and we have populations of folks who age into their hundreds eating these foods. They are not harmful foods, and in fact, they contain a lot of nutrients you can get nowhere else, especially nutrients that are very important for our short-chain fatty acid-producing microbiome uh, strains and species. So um, being able to reintroduce those things can help constipation in the long run. Um, that would be the other thing. I would force people to eat more fat, more olive oil with every meal. And I would, and I would force them to reintroduce starch if I had to just solve it with food, barring no like extreme bloating or extreme things like that. Okay. Let's get, uh, so let's talk about HCL because I know some people have to go soon. Um, but let's talk about HCL just so you all can have the whole, you know, enchilada, sorry for a food analogy, but remember it's 10% <laughs> off for the bundle. No one else has that. And then additionally, when you use the coupon SIBO SOS, you get the $15 off and the uh, continental shipping for free, which like, that's like a, such a sweet deal. I don't think we've ever done that before. Yeah. It comes out to be like 124.50, and it's significantly lower than the, I think it's like 160 something for the total. Like if you add the shipping and handling, etc. Yeah. Okay. So here's what it looks like. So that's the whole enzyme. We've been talking about those digestive enzymes and then HCL guard. People are wondering when do you, how can you tell about your stomach acid? It, so in my it, opinion, it not for, yeah, my opinion, the only way to tell if you have low stomach acid, barring going to, to find an integrative physician or a functional medicine doctor who actually has a, a pill capsule test or a Heidelberg test or one of these advanced stomach acid tests in their office, barring doing that, which is very hard to find these days um, and, and costly, uh, is just to try HCL and see what changes. If you react to it on the first uh, test, you will feel some sort of heat, burning, upsetness, uh, maybe loose stools, then it's not the right fit for you. And with our company, you can get your money back actually. Uh, for that product, um, not with other companies, but you can find that HCL has been used for for decades and has a lot of safe usage. You could find lots of products out there to just test it. Um, there's not really, I mean, another indicative test would be that let's say uh, you're listening to this and you're about to go have your dinner meal or your lunch meal, and you find some apple cider vinegar. Take a take a tablespoon uh, mm -hmm. with your food and see if you notice better digestion. Uh, apple cider vinegar is about a 2.4 on the pH scale. Your stomach needs to get down to about uh, less than a two, like 1.5 ish is like the generally recognized sweet spot or so. Um, so apple cider vinegar is going to help add more acid to your stomach. If you feel better with that, that's a kind of a good sign that more acid for you will be more helpful, but just taking ACV alone is not going to get you down to 1.5, which is why you're going to want to bring in an HCL supplement from somebody, whether it's us or not. Okay. And then if you have a hernia, hiatal hernia and gastritis, will the supplements help? Well, if you have hiatal hernia and gastritis, you should not take HCL guard. Um, you can still do holozymes and magnesium, but anybody with gastritis and uh, hiatal hernia is going to need to fix that first. So again, look into estrogen, progesterone, H. pylori, um, DGL, things like that. Okay. Um, have you seen any problems with the magnesium glycinate for those with oxalate issues? Oh. Uh, have I seen any what? What was the first Problems part? Problems with magnesium glycinate for those with oxalate issues. Not specifically, but some people can, anybody can have a reaction for any reason. So, um, right. To my knowledge, it does not, you know, magnesium glycinate and oxalates are not uh, a complete no no, but you could still have issues. Right. 
So let's just talk about fiber because someone's saying I take the sugar-free Metamucil capsules with my other supplements. Is Metamucil bad? So no, I don't consider Metamucil bad. Um, so Metamucil is, there's, there's many types of fiber. So let's define fiber real quick. Um, and let's define a few things so people can have a very important framework to take away because it doesn't need to be more complex than this. Fiber is food, is generalized food for generalized bugs. Prebiotics is specific food for specific bugs. Probiotics are specific bugs that give good outcomes. Paraprobiotics are dead specific bugs with good outcomes. So Metamucil is mostly insoluble fiber, meaning it's it's like the roughish. Like if you think about like say kale, if you're if you're not blenderizing it, you're actually eating it. There's a lot of roughage on kale that we're never going to quite break down or or like mold into nutrients. It's just roughage. It's cellulose and some other things. Metamucil is a lot of that roughage or that rough fiber. It's not bad, right? We eat it from starch. We eat it from various areas in our diet. So in general, not a bad thing, but in general, I think there are um, other prebiotics and other fiber blends that contain a spectrum of what you'd more naturally see in nature. So they would have some insoluble fiber, but a lot of soluble fibers. Insoluble basically means fermentable or changeable, if you will. Um, and so those focusing more on those specific prebiotics and um, some of those soluble fibers, uh, I think is a more reliable way to experience a better gut and better constipation. But if psyllium husk and metamucil is like your jam right now, I'm not saying stop that right away because you're it's it's not it's not checkers, but it's not quite chess, if that makes sense. You're in the gray zone, you're doing just fine. Don't give it up just yet, but there is improvements you could make in the long run. It's backgammon. Okay. The difference between holozyme and HCL guard. I was told not to take calcium because for seniors it goes to the tissues instead of the bones. Add K2. Um, yeah. vitamin K2. Holozyme has calcium. Why? I'm also interested in the magnesium citrate. How much mag citrate is in it? I think it's magnesium glycinate. But what um, is there calcium in holozyme? Yes, yes. There is there is mag citrate and calcium in holozyme. Oh, gotcha. okay. That's oh, part of the patented AES uh, activation patent. That's one of the reasons, if not the reason, that makes our enzymes different than everything else on the market is we have an activation patent. Basically, um, minerals combine with enzymes to turn them on. The, the enzymes need electrons. They need electricity to do their work. And that is called a whole enzyme. An apoenzyme means without the electrons, without the minerals. So all the other brands out there, you are assuming that your body has enough free-floating magnesium and calcium and other minerals like zinc to find the enzyme when it needs to find it, which is like in your stomach and in your small intestine to work. And when they don't work, it's because the environment wasn't, there wasn't enough extra electrons. There wasn't enough extra minerals. So we take the guesswork out of that by licensing a patent where the guy actually did all that work to figure that out. So while there is a small amount of calcium and magnesium in the products, we assume that all of the minerals are being eaten up by the enzyme process since it's all inside one pill. The only, there are certain kidney disorders, some other rare disorders where you can have zero calcium. In that case, holozyme would not be a fit for you unless your doctor told you it was. Um, calcium is not contraindicated for elderly individuals. It's just contraindicated if you don't eat enough K2 and vitamin D and things like that. Right. Um, okay. So. What is Miralax, Stephen? You said the scientific name for it earlier, but I think we need to connect that dot. So Miralax is polyethylene glycol and it is toxic. And I do not agree with your doctor. I would say fire your doctor. Um, that's not a good doctor. Uh, they're probably just busy and snowballed with everything they have going on in their life. So maybe they have a good heart, but there are studies, go search PEG, uh, PEG, gut disruption, NCBI or something like that. And you'll find the th two to four studies now they've done showing that polyethylene glycol disrupts the mucosal membrane as well as the microbiome attachment uh, processes. So um, not a, there are so many, like take sienna root, take 
anything else, mostly other than polyethylene glycol, honestly. Uh, so what about sun fiber? A lot of people love it. I, would say I, I, I think sun fiber is great. I've been recommending it for years. Um, partially right. hydrolyzed guar gum has a significant amount of research on it. Some of it is very beneficial for constipation. It is really well tolerated by a number of individuals who have bloating, but not everybody can tolerate it. And so, um, yeah, big fan. We have it in my house and I use it from time to time. And also start slow guys start slow. It's so easy to go. Oh, the bottle says five grams or whatever, just start slowly and build up. So that's, that's so very important. Um, okay. So we've covered the three different things that are in the bundle. You have a money back guarantee. You have a supportive Facebook group that Stephen has created with nutritionists and coaches to help you. Stephen, can you just talk about that for a second? Yeah. So I believe that, um, the best products in the world used at the wrong dosages inside of a body will get you no results and maybe negative results. And so part of my commitment with healthy gut and part of me trying to create the experience I wish I would have gotten uh, 14 years ago, 15 years ago, is having free health coaching, both as a Facebook group where you have other like-minded individuals where you guys can talk about you know, this isn't working, this is working, this is what I did to make it work, all that kind of stuff, sort of a protected space to share. That's the Facebook group. I'm active in there. Our health coaches are active in there. And then we have actual health coaches in, you know, in the company that are manning the phones. You can book calls with them. They can coach you on what's going on. If you believe that you are a um, edge case, meaning like the normal rules, even for this sort of forum do not apply to you because you're so different, then that's the perfect use of our health coaches. They have, to, that's what they, a lot of what they do is talk to people and say, okay, I'm worried about this, or I'm, I'm doing this. Would this still apply to me? So we're very happy to field those questions. And we think it's very important to figure out your ideal dosage um, because some people might take two HCL guard per meal and feel amazing, more energy, better hair, better nails, better poops. And other people need six capsules. Right. Some people only need two capsules of magnesium. Some people need four. Um, you got to figure those things out and we want to help you figure those things out. Shirley is saying, can all the products be opened and mixed into a smoothie? No, 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 you cannot mix that HCL. HCL is the one that you can't, you can't right. open. Um, if you want to Google the poly, may, just look up Miralax and then uh, the, that's how you get the spelling there. Um, yeah. So the Facebook group is for your customers, right, Stephen? So Correct. it's for customers. Um, we have a Facebook group, which is great. If you're into SIBO, I would say get into both because you're going to have so many resources and so much support, but that is for his customers. So it's a great resource, guys. People love Stephen's Facebook group. Um, as far as Atron Teal goes, Atron Teal is, is the thing that has been found clinically um, proven to help bloating. And it's, it diminishes the amount of methane that is produced from the methanogen overgrowth. So that's like the whole story with Dr. Ken Brown is that it, they, he found a study through someone that worked in his office almost by chance about how cows are fed certain things to help reduce the methane, um, gr the, the gas effect on the planet. And then he was able to extrapolate from that and make a formulation for people who are experiencing methane overgrowth. So it's not necessarily a constipation um, cure, right? It's a methane uh, production reduction um, supplement that so many people love and other people don't get helped by it. Dr. Brown says do it for another month, but that's not the point of this. This is about if you have constipation, that bundle that Stephen is offering is great. I love Otro Teal too. It's just different. So I wanted to answer that for you. Um, okay. Can we just talk about nervous system regulation for a second? Cause you did talk about that before and we just touched on it. Let's, let's go back to that. Yeah. So, um, so many people have heard about vagal tone. Other people are hearing about trauma and trauma work for the first time, the ACEs study, if any of this stuff rings a bell, a lot of this is just describing how toned, meaning how fit, basically tone and fit would be very good uh, analogies for each other, is your nervous system. Our nervous systems are built to have multiple speeds and multiple modes. If your child is being attacked by a dog or by something, 
you need to mobilize your nervous system and go mess that dog up and save your child. Like that has to be within your psyche and within your nervous system. And it is, it is inborn to you. But also we have the opposite, which is that we can lay around on the beach for hours on end and just chill in the sun. And so we have these polar extremes and then we have a lot of stuff in between. And what we want is a nervous system that can um, go uh, do something intense and then recover completely. So in, in animal in the animal world, a lot of times you'll see an animal that has a very stressful event shake. They're shaking out their nervous system and they're literally getting out the stress. And so in for humans, we need to do other things. We don't typically shake it out. We do other things to sort of uh, rejuvenate and rebuild. In our modern world, what seems to have happened is between social media, between 24-7 news, between cars and homes and everything that we have going on, it, it, the world is kind of built to keep us in sympathetic drive. Part of sympathetic drive is noticing new things. So every new notification, every new idea, that's going to keep you sympathetic. But we need to build the parasympathetic to offset that, which is the rest and rejuvenation. And so a lot of people... Uh, there's a there's a lot of things that you can do to to build that up, and some of them are very intense. Like I believe sauna and ice baths. A lot of what that's doing is causing parasympathetic changes and help there. Um, a more easy thing to do, and just as powerful, is to take your shoes off, go outside on the grass or the dirt, get slightly dirty, take off your sunglasses, your contacts, whatever. And just kind of walk around, let the eye, let the sun into your eyes, uninhibited by any glass or any sort of modifications, and let the earth talk to your body, and just just kind of remind yourself you're safe. Like literally five, ten minutes a day, just kind of walk around, be like I'm kind of safe. I'm just feeling my feet. That's a pebble. Ow! Is that an ant? Please don't bite me. Um, gotta go. You know, you know, moving over here. This grass sucks. Why do I have weeds? Whatever. Just do that for ten minutes. And let your body know that it's in relation to the earth, it's in relation to the sun, and that will help with the rejuvenation. And so there are other things that are more aggressive, like ketamine. We've I've talked about that in the past with Siobhan. There's there's all kinds of other really cool stuff. There's no one way to do it. There's no one thing that will fix your nervous system. It will be a layered approach, just like constipation. But the easiest ones are free. And those are grounding, sunlight, exercise, prayer, meditation, these things cost nothing. Uh, for the holozymes, it says take two with each meal and two on an empty stomach. Can you talk more about what the empty stomach taking is doing? I'm reading everything you need to know about enzymes by Tom Bohager, and he seems to say that taking digestive enzymes may have useful sparing effects on other enzymes. I'm not sure what that means, the sparing effects, but um, I probably have that book. I just haven't probably read it in like five or years or so. Um, so yes, enzymes taken on an empty stomach is part of the protocols behind the patent in holozymes. And what it will do is will help clean up anything in your gut or in your blood that's left over. So you can have maldigested proteins, maldigested carbohydrates, maldigested, uh, fats, um, fatty acids. And so taking the enzymes on an empty stomach was shown for the for the patent for the studies basically that you can affect um things like fibrinogen which is a, a protein inside of blood that sort of helps with clotting and but also can be sticky and too thick uh there's there's other things like for instance the the AES patent for holozyme showed and again you can't say it was just systemic dosing which was the at bed without food dosing or just the food dosing but it showed an 18% reduction in the peak on blood glucose. It also showed a approximate 40 to 50% reduction in high uric acid for individuals. So you can't say that you can get that just by taking it with food or just taking it systemically. You have to take it at the same time. And it's also very low amount of people. These were studies that were placebo controlled, but there were only like three people and three people or 20 people and 20 people. And, and those studies need to be replicated. And hopefully in the future, we'll be able to be a large enough company that we can do that. Uh, as far as hormones go, Sue, we were, he was talking earlier about estrogen levels and constipation. Sue saying, I'm curious about the connection between hormones and estrogen, hormones and constipation, estrogen, testosterone, DHEA. 
I have both constipation and elevated hormone levels and nobody can tell me why. But that might not be what's driving your constipation. Just as an aside, you could have other reasons. But Stephen, do you have any comments on that? Well, actually, um, a lot of people will have elevated spent. Uh, we can't measure like spent estrogen and and you know fresh estrogen. We don't have a lab test for that. But there's something called hepatic recirculation. You can look at that. That's basically what's happening is that um, your colon is not... Um, in fact, your entire large intestine, your entire large intestine is not like a, I wouldn't call it one of like the most brilliant organs you have. It's kind of basic with what it does. It, it does it really effectively, which is like, it is constantly drawing the last bit of nutrients out of what's left. And if stuff sits too long in the large intestine, it doesn't have a timer. It doesn't know when a cake is baked. It just keeps doing its job. It's just going to keep pulling the last little bit of water, electrolytes, and potentially spent estrogens and progesterones out of your poop that's sitting down there. So um, we that's why we want to circulate it every other day, every day. We want to be circulating that, that stool. We want to get that out of you. We don't want to over harvest from your large intestine. Now, is that causing those numbers to appear higher on the test? I don't know. It could be part of it. Um, I was actually speaking, I think, more about the gastritis for, for estrogen and progesterone, but people with low estrogen can have constipation as well. But as I mentioned in the beginning, this is chestnut checkers, and you got to dig in a lot of different holes to try to find what is your combination. So in this case, hormones are maybe not the, the contributing factor. Um, you know, It's probably something else. Okay. Um, all righty. What about vitamin C? You mentioned vitamin C. Is there a brand that you particularly like? No, I, I just like the ones with, uh, with the, uh, what are they called? Bioflavonoids. Um, it's typically rose hips is what they put in it. Uh, I think it's bioflavonoids, but they, they just try to mimic a little bit more of what nature would, would bundle with vitamin C. Okay. Um, but trying to buy like, a thousand milligrams of perfect nature harvested amyla berry vitamin C is like even too expensive for me. So uh, the other thing is be sure to check your sources. Try not to get corn-based vitamin C guys, if possible. Um, if possible, let's see. I'm going to, um, let's see. What's magnesium sulfate? Uh, magnesium sulfate is uh, typically the stuff I think in the the uh, topical magnesium. Um, that's typically a topical magnesium that people put on their feet or put in their bath. Got it. I um, think Epsom salt's very close to that, if not part of that. Got it. Um, how can you tell if you're enema dependent? How can you tell if you're enema dependent? Yeah. Um, well, uh, so... Constipation, uh, your bowel, if you haven't heard yet, there's a lot of nerves around your intestines. And um, you can look at this from various ways, but um, there is a bit of memory, if you will, to mm -hmm. your intestines. And so uh, we all uh, train ourselves. Some people, for instance, will not poop in public. They literally have trained themselves to forget about the urge to poop unless they're in the comfort of their own homes. That will also contribute to constipation, by the way. If you don't go when your body says to go, um, there are people who um, have found relief through enemas, and then um, it becomes a, a thing that's done probably weekly, if not you know more than more often than weekly, and they can't almost go without it because there's a psychological trigger. There's also some memory in the bowels, and so it it kind of adds to this whole um, not addiction, but a, a, a behavioral loop, if you will, about it. And so I would say you would know that you're, you're in that behavioral lip or you're, you're uh, addicted to it or whatever by stopping and trying other things. And if you can't, you know, wean yourself off of it, basically, if you can't wean yourself off, then you have your answer. Right. Okay. Um, let's see, guys, the amount of exercise Steven's talking about is the amount that gets your body going. He's not saying go run a marathon, just to be clear, do what is appropriate for you. If you can't do 10,000 steps, don't do 10,000 steps. I think a recent study was saying that 7,000 steps was a sweet spot for people. If you're 90, 
you're probably not doing 7,000 steps. I think if you've got 3,000 steps, it would be awesome. So your Qigong, your yoga in the chair, swimming, or, you know, water aerobics, um, there are a lot of other options. So I just wanted to address that. So I know it's really the pits, but none of us can do what we did when we were 20. We're just doing things differently. So that applies to all, all ages. How does um, colonic hydrotherapy fit in? It's a steroid. It's a, it's an enema on steroids, folks. Yeah. Yeah. It's an enema on steroids. Uh, look, um, if done with a really skilled practitioner. So part of the issue with colonics is the practitioner matters. Um, how well they can attune the system to your body, how well they know their own system, how, uh, what's their skill level, almost like chiropractic, right? Like there are some chiropractors who are amazing and there's other chiropractors that put people in the hospital. And so you can't just assume because they do that thing that they're very good at it. And so I don't love me methodologies or I don't love things that require you to be like top 10% in the world for me to be safe and get results. And I'm not saying that colonic hydrotherapy is like super risky, but it, I think it's a really intense intervention that should be left for a few times in your life, if that, um, because you are also washing away a lot of your microbiome. If you think about that, you're sort of uh, stripping down your microbiome in a way. So again, not that there's not reasons to do it, not that there's not times to do it, um, but I would just think strongly and, and try to limit it to a few times in a lifetime. Yeah, that's why colonoscopy preps are known to be like a microbiome wipeout too. So you you know, we got to repopulate afterwards. Uh, what about H. pylori and HCL, Stephen? We only have a moment or two left. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm uh, that that line of thinking that came out many years ago. I don't believe there's truth to it. Um, I want to make my body at least inhabitable to H. pylori as possible. And that starts with having great stomach acid and great pepsin. And I've seen a number of people over a hundred, including myself, do H. pylori programs while on HCL and eradicate it according to the test. So I do not believe that they are exclusive. Okay. And Mutually exclusive. What about aloe? A lot of people use aloe products uh, for constipation. Yeah, there's some cool there's some cool data on it. It seems much more hit or miss though, and so that's why I don't typically talk a ton about it. So if it's working for you, great. I have no issues with it. Um, it's basically like a complex polysaccharide. It's basically a complex prebiotic in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. Um, it, so if you think about it, it contains a lot of polyphenols and polysaccharides. And so um, if you're handling it, if it's working for you, cool, no cool. issue. But for a lot of people, it, it can be uh, it can set off a lot of people. It does. I, I do know that. Um, okay. Here we go. Final few moments. Thanks for being here, everybody. This is the the pack, the three pack, the bundle. It's the magnesium we've been talking about. It's those holozymes. Take them with food. Take it away from food as well. HCL guard. That's the one you cannot open the capsule on if you are, you know, trying to do that for whatever reason. If you want to know the ingredients of each one of those, then you just go over here to the shop and then you find the product and you can find, let's see, here it is. There's the ingredients and then you keep going and there's a ton of information about it. But what I wanted to really also say is, let me go back, you wanna use this page, this link that Clarissa is sharing with you all, because that's gonna be the automatic 10% off and then use when you're checking out coupon code SIBO, S-O-S, and that is the additional $15 off and free shipping in the US. We've never done that before. So it is super, super awesome to have that. Thank you, Stephen, for that. I really appreciate it. Okay. Um, well, no, I don't, the, Trish, I don't think that Stephen was saying chiropractors are bad. I think he- No. No, we love chiropractors. It's just like everything else. There are good practitioners that are dentists. There are ones that are not up to date on the latest research. Absolutely not, Trish. We're not saying that anybody is all good or all bad. We're talking about individuals. I know Stephen and I both love chiropractors, so I'm going to move on. Yeah, many of my friends are chiropractors, so if that's all you took away from this, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, all I'm saying is just be... Be uh, smart. Yeah, be smart. Be smart. Everybody be that smart. gets an MD, 5% of those people are at the bottom 5%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Let's throw some love into the chat for Stephen. Stephen, thanks so much for um, all you do and for our special offers that we have exclusively here. Um, big hugs.
Big hug, Stephen. And Thanks, what's everybody. Your customer, what's your customer service email if people have specific questions that we didn't cover today? Uh, support at healthygut.com. Support at healthy health. Thanks, Clarissa. Thank goodness I didn't need to type that. Okay. Bye, Stephen. Talk to you later. All right. Thanks, Siobhan. All right. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, everybody. Take care. I'm glad. I hope this helped. I really do. I hope that you can really... Um, get resolution to this chronic or even occasional problem that is such a lifestyle hassle. It's also not great to have those toxins in your body. There's all kinds of reasons to do it um, and to take care of it. And Petunia says that it's time for her to eat. So I will push um, stop. Okay. Thanks all. Bye. Thanks. Okay. Here we go.